Good morning, St. Francis. It is Tuesday, April the 6th, 2021. It is Tuesday of the octave of Easter, Easter Tuesday, the third day of Easter. Coming to you from one of the southern locations in the diocese along the coast. Uh, again, another visitation that's kind of nice to be able to, to uh, take uh, at this time of the year to the coastal areas. Um, and so, uh, nice, uh, nice, uh, nice morning here in Carolina uh, once again. Um, all this week, uh, like I said before, is a great solemnity, the highest of celebrations in the church's calendar. Um, it is a solemnity because, again, it is, it is celebrating the recreation of creation, once again, by Jesus' resurrection, breaking the bonds of sin and death, breaking the bonds of all of those things that, again, can stop us from being human to its fullest, can stop us from en enjoying and reveling and celebrating all that it means to be human in this world. This day in which we, uh, this week, uh, in which we recreate an eighth day of the week, something that breaks the bonds of what we as human beings can limit ourselves to be and become, something that expands the horizons of who and what we are meant to be, as not only creations of God, not only the image and likeness of God in this world, but witnesses of God's love and power and mercy and forgiveness and giving in this world. Again, this day, in which, when this week, on uh, this day, which recreates everything that we ever expected, or everything that we could ever hope to expect of ourselves and of creation, and brings it to us in a wonderful, beautiful, and glorious way. So this week we hear of all the resurrection accounts of each of the Gospels, or the appearances to the Apostles, to Mary Magdalene, to other people, uh, again, to impress upon us how all the creation has been jerked onto new courses and has been recreated in a way that we sometimes still, and many times still, have yet to realize, have yet to appreciate, have yet to embrace. And so in that first reading, Peter's great speech to the people of Jerusalem, once he realizes that Jesus has risen from the dead, and the people come to believe in him, and come to believe what he says can possibly be true. And so they ask to be baptized, and again, the Acts of the Apostles says that 3,000 were added to the group of believers on the day that Peter, that Peter preached. In the Gospel, uh, we continue uh, what we heard on Easter Sunday uh, from John's Gospel. Uh, and it's now Mary, still at the tomb, weeping, even after Peter and the other apostle have come to take a look inside of it and go away, not understanding fully what's going on. Mary weeps. And two men, dressed in dazzling clothes, you know, dazzling white clothes, basically stand beside her and they ask her why she is weeping. Again, she says, because they've taken my Lord, I don't know where they have put him. She turns around, does not recognize Jesus. He asks her the same question again, why are you weeping? It's then that she realizes that it is Jesus, not just her Rabboni, her teacher, not Messiah and Lord, but her friend. And she tries to cling to him so that he won't go away again. But he says, he doesn't, you don't have to worry about that because he will never ever go away. But the importance of letting other people know that God's great work, God's, God's great promise to defeat sin and death has occurred and has been accomplished. And Mary goes again to become another great witness or the great witness of the resurrection, the great declarer and the great proclaimer of Christ's resurrection to others. Again, that sense, why are we weeping many times? You know, why do we continue to weep? And how do we continue to weep knowing that Jesus has risen from the dead and the bonds that, that, that have been created by sin and death no longer exist? Do we weep in a different way? Do we understand misfortune and disappointments in a different way because of the resurrection? Do we embrace something more about what it means to be human, experience the ups and downs of human life, but confident always that God has risen from the, that God has raised Jesus from the dead and all of history, all of what we ever expected can never be the same again and has all been changed for the good, for the glory of God. When we weep, we must always be conscious that we do not weep in vain. We do not weep because there is no hope. We weep because our Lord needs to come to us. Our Lord needs to give us that comfort and that peace that only our Lord can give. May we always come to understand that in this, not just in this week of resurrection, but through all our lives, how the resurrection has changed everything that is sad and dark in us to what can be glorious and wonderful. Glorious Easter, St. Francis, the Lord, in peace.